morning all of you yeah so in the last class we had derived the blasius uh, similarity solution i hope all of you can uh, recollect how we derived it based on the similarity variables we reduced the pde to an ode and uh, also we have seen the way blasius did the solution i think some of you were not there but uh, to summarize you can uh, i'll just tell you blasius used the series expansion technique where he assumed the series to uh, to be a power series and he substituted that into the uh, blasius uh, equation applied the boundary conditions and this series expansion was valid for small values of eta okay so if your uh, eta was very large the other boundary condition says that eta going to infinity your f prime should be 1 so we cannot apply that to the convergent series therefore we had to come out with another series which which is actually convergent for large values of eta okay so that is an asymptotic expansion he did and then he matched the coefficients uh, of of these two series uh, subject to these boundary conditions three boundary conditions and therefore he finally calculated uh, the slope at uh, uh, the wall that is f double prime at 0 so once he got the uh, slope you all the coefficients in that series were a function of that slope and he he calculated the uh, f basically okay so that that's how blasius did it and we have uh, discussed that in the last class so any questions on that uh, i hope uh, you know it's a standard mathematics uh, nothing more than that so today what we will see is what is more practical nowadays it's uh, to use numerical methods to solve uh, any ordinary differential equation at the time when blasius uh, did it he didn't have any access to these computers or whatever even by hand uh, he couldn't think of solving this so therefore he resorted to this uh, uh, no uh, analytical uh, expansion techniques so i am going to talk about a very important uh, numerical method to solve uh, the higher order ordinary differential equation and please take note of this method because uh, i will not be repeating this again and uh, the rest of the similarity solutions you will be solving this yourself you know you will be writing a program to solve the odes by this method okay so therefore you play uh, please please pay close attention uh, to what i am going to describe here so the technique that we are going to uh, solve uh, used to solve the ode will be called the shooting technique okay so uh, have any one of you uh, had a numerical methods course where the shooting technique was explained so you know the shooting method okay so uh, anybody else okay so i i think then i'll pretty much go through the uh, thing again uh, if uh, you find something different then you can also uh, bring in your ideas okay so basically this is the ode which is a third order non linear ode so therefore you cannot find a closed form analytical solution subject to these boundary conditions so what the shooting method does it's very simple you have to first reduce nth order ode to n first order odes okay so in this case you have a third order ode so reduce reduce it to three first order odes so you can just say one equation will be directly f prime should be equal to some variable g g prime should be equal to h and finally you can cast this equation in terms of h f and g okay so these are the three odes which satisfy this particular uh, blasius equation and they are all three first order odes okay so once you reduce that to three first order for first order odes of this form now the next thing is how to we solve this first order ode okay numerically what you have to do you have to discretize the uh, governing equations on on to physical domain now this is one dimensional therefore you have to discretize into points okay and you have to uh, integrate these ode over these points so you start from some location say typically at eta equal to 0 and from there you keep marching in space till whatever your extent of the domain is okay so typically you want to have a domain large enough no the large domain here means the eta should be not infinity practically but something which is quite large which satisfies the other boundary condition where your f prime equal to 1 so we will we have already seen from the blasius solution that uh, uh, your boundary layer thickness extends to some some value of uh, eta which is close to 5.58 okay be, be, beyond that you find that your f prime is almost one it doesn't change 
So therefore, anything above 5, 6 should be good enough. Okay, so for safer side, you can take value of eta up to 10. Okay, so now next, what you have to do? So you can use either, you know, if you want to go for higher order accurate, you can use Range Kutta, but just to make it simple, you can use a very first order Euler method. Okay, so you can just discretize the ordinary differential equation based on the Euler method. Okay, so what it says is uh, any derivative like df by d eta can be written as fi minus fi minus 1 by d eta. Okay, so that is a simple first order uh, upwind difference. Okay, so that you do that and you can now express your f of i. Okay, now this is based on the current point, so that depends on the value of the previous point. Okay, plus of course all the things on the right hand side are based on previous points okay so therefore you start this loop from 2 to n okay where 1 1 gives you the boundary condition okay you know the value at the boundary right that is the boundary condition okay and you start this marching from i equal to 2 that is from the second point till the last point okay now for this you need boundary conditions for f g and h all at i equal to 1 okay so your i equal to 1 corresponds to eta equal to 0 okay so you need all the three values at eta equal to 0 to start this marching process and you have to solve this together you know first for the second point you solve all the three move to the third point use that value so, so on and so forth but the problem is if you look at the boundary conditions we have these two boundary conditions f of 1 equal to 0 g of 1 equal to 0 but we do not have the boundary condition for h of 1 right so uh, uh, rather we have a boundary condition for g but for large values of g we know that uh, at large values of eta g, g goes to 1. So what essentially you have to do here this is why this is called a shooting technique so you shoot a guess basically okay so you guess the value of h at 1 and you just substitute and then you uh, do the marching process go all the way till eta equal to 10 and then you find out whether g at n so where n n is corresponding to eta equal to 10 that is the last value of the point okay so you have to choose n number of points such that the nth point corresponds to eta equal to 10 okay so at the nth point so the value of uh, g should be equal to 1 so if this satisfies that means your guess for h of 1 is correct right so this is why it is called a shooting method so you just do it by guess guess work so you keep shooting values of uh, h1 and make sure that uh, as and when you get the solution finally at the nth point the other boundary condition which which is the third boundary condition is automatically satisfied if your guess for h is correct then this should give this satisfy this particular boundary condition if not you have to keep on doing this again and again till you land up the correct value of h which satisfies that boundary condition okay so g of n equal to 1 nothing means f f prime of n minus 1 should be equal to 0 okay so or the other better smarter way of doing it rather than just simply throwing wild guesses okay which is not probably going to lead to a converged value anywhere in the next 100 or 200 uh, guesses the more better way of approaching the correct value will be using Newton's method okay so Newton Raphson technique is a very powerful technique for solving uh, any non-linear algebraic equation okay that is also numerically so what it says if you want to solve this particular algebraic equation okay this is the condition that you have to satisfy and you have to find the roots of h h1 okay such that this particular equation is satisfied okay so what does newton raphson method say so you can choose a guess value such that you know the guess value is coming out of this particular equation which is h1 of k minus this is the f of x by f prime of x okay so if you choose your uh, guesses based on this rather than wild guess it is more likely to converge to the correct solution which satisfies this equation okay so it is based on the slope method you know it is a modified secant method I think I am not going to into details but you can always quickly derive that 
you are assuming a linear line and uh, you are getting the slope of it and therefore you are getting a better guess of the root okay so now if you rewrite this now the thing is how do we know the slope of f prime uh, with respect to h okay so f prime this is at f prime at n nth point uh, for different guesses of h at the first point so how do you know the slope so if initially you don't know the slope okay so what we have to do is you apply a simple uh, finite differencing scheme to calculate the derivative okay so to do that what we will do is we will apply finite differencing scheme between two uh, two kind of two guesses so guess k minus 1 and k so between these two guesses we will use the finite difference again and uh, so we we actually expand this numerically the same way we expanded this term right here you know simple upwind differencing okay so here k means uh, guess okay so the first time you just give a wild guess okay the second time also you give a wild guess so now you, you have two wild guesses and two solutions from the third time you can so calculate the right value based on the second wild guess and the first wild guess okay so you need two wild guesses because you need this particular df by dh therefore you are first giving two wild guesses and taking the difference in the values of f of n for the two wild guesses corresponding to those wild guesses okay and from the third wild guess you you don't it's not wild anymore so you use this and then you calculate the more appropriate guess value so like that you keep using the previous guess values and un until you are satisfying the condition that f f prime of n minus 1 equal to 0 okay or you won't achieve exactly 0 numerically it should be a very small number something like 10 power minus 5 so once this condition is satisfied that then your guess is good enough you can stop there and you can say that your iterations have converged okay so now you have an iteration here this is an iterative loop where you keep changing the guess okay each time you change the guess you have to march the solution in space correct so for each guess you have to do this so if you are doing 100 guesses for for each each guess each of the 100 guesses you have to march in space and check if your condition is satisfied for convergence okay once it is converged then you can now you have uh, the solutions completely right numerically you have f so this is for f this this is for f prime this is for f double prime so you have all the solutions at all the points which you can uh, plot and uh, you will be surprised to find you will be exactly matching with the blasius solution okay whatever he did it analytically so this is a very good uh, numerical technique and uh, we will have a few more uh, odes in this uh, course which you will be using the same method it's identical whether it doesn't matter how many orders that you are looking at you have to reduce that to n first order odes and you will be using the same technique so i suggest uh, strongly to understand this and you will be coding it yourself okay so you can uh, probably use any program uh, programming language of your choice fortran or c++ or matlab and you can implement this once the algorithm is done you can plug in your new odes and then you can get the solutions okay so any any questions uh, i hope i try to make it as clear as possible so if uh, you have some doubts you please ask me right now because i am not going to talk about the shooting method again is it clear okay so assuming that now you have the solutions uh, to f as a function of eta so now we will go ahead and uh, we will now calculate the other derived quantities okay the first quantity that we are interested so this since this we are doing this for a flat plate we are interested in calculating the local shear stress okay that is tau wall as a function of x so the shear stress at the wall varying locally okay 
so how do we get it huh mu du yeah with respect to what y okay okay very good so if you go back uh, to the similarity solution uh, what is the expression for du by dy that we derived okay in terms of stream function stream function was a function of eta so we had derived an expression for du by dy huh what 0 0.332 that is that is not that is not the slope that is the curvature that, that is the value of f double prime yeah you are right but that was what we derived with respect to eta okay i am asking you to convert this in terms of uh, you know y so you have to do the transformation okay from eta to y again okay so you can say that this is new can you tell du by dy in terms of f and eta okay so i have, i think we have already done this derivation i don't want to go through the steps so please look into your uh, earlier class notes and tell me the final expression okay u infinity i think it was uh, square root of uh, by nu x okay and of course you know du by d eta we can write 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 this as d, d square f by d eta square okay and this is at eta equal to 0 okay i hope all of you have this you now we have derived it okay so now uh, as i said we have got this value either numerically or from the blasius solution that at eta equal to 0 the curvature is 0 0.332 okay so therefore your tau wall is from this you can also non dimensionalize the shear stress through what is called as a skin friction coefficient and uh, which can also vary locally so this is uh, written as tau wall by half rho u infinity square okay if you plug in all the values uh, you will be ending up with a nice expression like this as a function of reynolds number okay and uh, you can also now go ahead and calculate the drag force once you know the local shear stress you can calculate the drag force which is the total force acting on the plate so how do we calculate the drag force okay so you are right you have to integrate it locally over the surface area okay here of course uh, we are assuming its unit width in the third direction so this is tau dx 0 to l so this will give me the total drag force on the plate so if i substitute this will be 0 0.332 which uh, gives me the value 0.664 um, if i assume width of b okay this is the width in the third direction perpendicular to the board okay so this gives me the expression for the drag force okay i can also rather than looking at the local variation of the skin friction coefficient i can calculate kind of an average over the entire plate okay sometimes people report in terms of the average skin friction coefficient so i would like to average it over the entire plate i will call this as cf uh, based on x is equal to l okay and over bar indicates average here so how do i average i say 1 1 1 by l integral 0 to l cfx dx okay so this is how i average the skin friction coefficient over the entire plate if you do the averaging you will find out that you will get this nice expression okay where now your reynolds number is defined based on x is equal to l okay so rel here will be u infinity l by u 
okay so i'm i'm sure that most of you have done this in the fluid mechanics but uh, probably uh, you didn't know how exactly those numbers were coming you know you were already given an expression for uh, shear stress and from there you were doing it i think now you would be your understand sh should be much better okay so so that is exactly the curvature term which blaschis has determined you know so in both the way the, in, in both the ways in the way that blaschis tried to do it by power series expansion and the way that we are doing it by the uh, shooting technique in both the ways the struggle is to find the curvature okay so here also we don't know the value of h at 1 so h is nothing but the curvature basically right and blaschis also didn't know that okay so he had to invent an asymptotic expansion and then match the solutions and finally find this curvature and we are also doing by means of guess work we are cal calculating the curvature so the curvature is the key once you get the curvature everything just uh, simply is solved okay so now is next what we will move on to the thermal boundary layer i think uh, we have spent enough time on the fluid mechanics part so we will look at the solution to the heat transfer problem okay so blaschis did the flat plate solution for only the fluid hydrodynamics and stopped there okay it was polhausen uh, who continued uh, the extended the solution for uh, similarity solution towards heat transfer so this is this is also called as polhausen solution okay so in the case of uh, heat transfer you well very well know that uh, earlier we had considered only the fluid flow and this was the velocity profile so now you are maintaining this surface at a constant temperature okay so you can also do a case with the constant heat flux i am not going to do it now but there is also similarity solution possible for that case i will leave that as an exercise to you so what polhausen did was he took the wall temperature to be uniform okay and then uh, he was interested in calculating the solution for the temperature profile okay so now if you apply the boundary layer equations that we derived okay so can you uh, tell me the uh, terms in the boundary layer equation for temperature i am asking uh, the governing equation for the energy yeah uh so u dt by dx okay is equal to plus yeah mu by rho cp into du by dy the whole square okay this is your boundary layer approximation for energy equation correct so if you make an approximation that we are looking at only uh, low speed flows you know and uh, moderate reynolds numbers okay so you can say that safely the viscous dissipation term can be neglected in comparison it will not be exactly zero but can be neglected with respect to the order of magnitude of the other terms okay so therefore it gets much more simplified okay now what we are going to do is uh, so what are the boundary conditions for this at y equal to 0 t equal to t wall right and y equal y going to infinity and at x is equal to 0 so now i'm going to define a non dimensional temperature theta okay i want to define in such a way that 
the non dimensional temperature is exactly identical to the velocity profile so how do i how do i define so i want to convert this profile into something like a velocity profile how do i define my theta t minus t infinity if i do t minus t infinity at y equal to 0 is it going to be 0 t minus t wall by what huh okay t infinity minus t wall so that at y equal to 0 my t equal to t wall your theta equal to 0 at y going to infinity my t goes to t infinity my theta goes to 1 okay so if you plot the uh, theta you will you will get exactly a profile like this right okay why I want to do this way if you happen to compare now you write your equation in terms of theta this is u d theta by dx okay suppose I compare this with the momentum equation that I had written and I assume that Prandtl number equal to 1 exactly that is my alpha equal to nu okay and I just replace my theta with u by u infinity okay so what do you find this is exactly identical to the momentum equation okay so except for u by u infinity you have in terms of theta okay so it is exactly identical to the momentum equation therefore for this case where Prandtl number equal to 1 so the solution for theta as a function of say x and y should be exactly identical to u by u infinity right as a function of okay so this this is a very important conclusion you know for a flat plate case uh, in the momentum equation you do not have any pressure gradient and if you non dimensionalize the energy so the non dimensional forms of uh, the momentum and the energy equation are exactly identical when your Prandtl number equal to 1 okay now when Paulhausen looked at it he knew directly he had the solution for Prandtl number equal to 1 okay the profile that you have already derived for velocity is the same and Prandtl number equal to 1 however he also guessed that for Prandtl number not equal to 1 we can still find some kind of a similarity solution okay so what he did as usual so now he has uh, guessed that theta is a function of eta okay similar to the way that my u by u infinity is a function of some g of eta okay the same analogy applied and the same similarity variable also he used okay where my eta is y by delta which is y square root of u infinity by nu x which we have derived in the last class okay he used the same similarity variable and he assumed that if there could be a similarity solution for theta which is a function of eta so the proof of this is that if you substitute for uh, theta as a function of eta into this it should reduce to an od perfectly okay if it does then there is definitely a similarity solution okay so now he calculated all the other terms which are required you already know u and v okay so d theta by dx will be d theta by d eta and similarly so this will be what can 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 you work out and tell me your eta is a function of x here so you have d theta by your theta is a function of eta okay so i am replacing everything with because your theta is a function of eta only okay so this will be d eta d theta by d eta and d eta by dx so this is uh, y square root of into x power uh, differential of uh, x power minus half okay that is minus half 
so you have x power minus 3 by 2 which I can again write it like this like this okay and this already is my eta okay so this can be written as minus eta by 2x into d theta by d eta so d theta this one is straightforward d eta by dy is directly this so this is nothing but u infinity by nu x into d theta by d eta okay so now it you can also find the second derivative d square theta by d eta square or dy square here so that will be u infinity by nu x into d square theta by d eta square okay so all this can be substituted let us call this as equation number 1 so you already know expressions for u and v okay similarity expressions which you had derived before if you substitute all of this into 1 so I am not going to once again do the substitution and uh, 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 making a nice form of the this thing but finally you get a neat expression which is actually an ODE perfectly all the other terms get cancelled off so you get only a function of eta everywhere so there are no terms in terms of x and y coming out so therefore uh, Polhausen's guess that eta theta should be a function of eta was absolutely correct okay so this is the similarity solution that you can get for temperature now the boundary conditions for this once again at eta equal to 0 your theta should be 0 right and eta going to infinity theta should be equal to 1 so eta going to infinity means two things either your y going to infinity or your x going to 0 so in both cases your theta has to become 1 okay so therefore uh, so now we now everything is getting familiar okay you have a nice uh, ODE which is second order is it linear or non-linear non-linear why linear why why your f is a function of eta so it is not completely non-linear it is not linear also it is quasi linear okay your f is still a function of eta right it is it is not of course you do not have a theta term here but it is still a function of eta so this this is a quasi linear ODE okay so therefore you cannot still find an analytical solution to this so you have to once again go for a numerical approach okay of course you know this equation is easier to solve even numerically by integrating it rather than the shooting method that we had used okay so I will I will give you that method first before we find the solution by shooting method so I can cast write this so this is the solution method 1 okay although it looks like an analytical method finally we end up with a expression which has to be done numerically okay so I can write this in my convention which I am more uh, familiar with I am writing as theta double prime and this is theta prime just like I used f double prime and f prime so this is theta double prime by theta prime should be equal to minus half pr into f okay I am just rewriting the similarity equation from the Blasius equation I also know that if I rewrite the Blasius equation I can say half of f is equal to minus f triple prime by f double prime correct so if I rewrite the Blasius solution I can write like this now you can see I can substitute for minus half into f in terms of f triple prime so I can link I can link these two equations I can write this as Prandtl number times f triple prime by okay so correct 
So if I, I can now integrate it twice, I directly get the solution for theta. Okay, if I if I now integrate once with respect to uh, eta, so integrating once, so this will be what ln of theta prime. Okay, so that should be equal to ln of f prime to the power pr. So pr into this I can put it as f prime f double prime to the power pr plus some constant which I will use ln of c1 therefore my theta prime should be c1 f double prime power pr okay this I will call as number 3. Okay, so if I integrate once, I get this solution where this constant is not known. If I will integrate it again, okay. In, in fact, I can I can do that here. If I integrate it once more, I'll get theta as a function of eta and pr. What should be on the right hand side? So I integrate it from zero to some value of eta, c one, f double prime, power pr. Okay, d eta plus some c two. Okay, so this is my final solution for theta. Okay, so I integrate once, I integrate it twice. All right. So this is f double prime here. If you don't, you don't see it. So now I have to find the two constants c1 and c2. Uh, how do I determine the two constants? Boundary conditions. Okay. So theta at eta equal to zero, equal to zero. Okay. So if I apply this here to equation number four, so what will I get? At eta equal to zero, if I integrate from zero to zero, this is what zero. Okay, so therefore my C C two has to be and uh, the other boundary condition eta going to infinity theta should be equal to one. Okay, so my eta going to infinity, so this is one equal to zero to infinity. Okay, so I take C one which is a constant outside. Uh, this is your f double prime. Pr, okay, into d eta. Therefore, your C1 is nothing but 1 by 0 to infinity f double prime to the power. Okay, so this gives my final expression for theta as a function of eta and Pr. So that is C1, C1 which I have calculated now. So in the numerator, I have 0 to eta. F double prime to the power PR d eta divided by zero to infinity F double prime to the power. Okay, everybody is convinced. Okay, if you have uh, problems in integrating, you have to go back and revise. How do you do the integration? I cannot now spend a half a class teaching that. Okay, so finally you get the solution now. Although this looks like an analytical solution, finally, f what you are getting is not a continuous function, right? Now what you got from the Blasius solution, okay, numerically was for discrete points therefore now f is available only for discrete points so what you can do you can either do a curve fitting kind of a thing make a continuous function out of it and integrate it here okay so even the integration has to be done numerically 
okay you can use mathematica or whatever mathematica is a very good software where where you, you can do symbolic manipulations you now you can directly say that give this equation and f as a function of eta and it will integrate and give you the value of uh, theta as a function of eta okay or you can also write another program where you can evaluate this integrals numerically you can either use a simple rectangular rule or trapezoidal rule okay so these are very basic numerical integration procedures which you can apply at those discrete points and you can determine these integrals and therefore for any value of prandtl number you substitute that you do this integration numerically for the numerator and denominator and you get the solution for theta okay so that is that is i mean that's up to you left up to you or or the other way what what is the other way of finding the solution okay so this this is the equation that you know so now i have given you one method where you it looks like an analytical solution but finally you end up doing a numerical integration here okay so what 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 could be the possible method too hmm shooting method okay so which now i hope you have already become so familiar that you would like to use only this method okay so now you reduce the uh, ode into uh, two first order odes so for example you can say your theta prime equal to x this is one ode and based on that you can say x prime equal to minus pr by 2f into x so these are the two first order odes okay you have reduced this into so this let let me call this as equation number uh, 5 okay so and you have the boundary conditions for theta at theta equal to 0 right so theta at 0 equal to 0 but you don't have the boundary condition for x at 0 right but you know that theta going to infinity should be equal to 1 okay now this is the same kind of problem that you did for the blasius case you didn't know the boundary condition for h at 0 the same way here you do you don't know for x okay so you do the same shooting technique you guess the value of x at 0 you discretize it and march you check whether your theta at large value of eta equal to 1 okay so you keep doing this iteratively till it finally matches that boundary condition okay so the same shooting technique can be applied for this okay the only thing is for this solution you need f at that point so first you have to solve the blasius equation and use that value of f into this because before solving the energy equation you need to know the flow field correct so you have to integrate the code where you are solving for f with this code you get the value of f and put it into this and then you again apply the same uh, newton's technique with the shooting method and get the solution for theta okay so i'll just one more thing with with which i'll stop today if you look at this particular solution which we have derived by method 1 okay for a particular case where prandtl number is equal to 1 okay what happens so this theta so i can directly integrate it out now i can do analytical integration if prandtl number equal to 1 okay so 0 to eta f double prime will be f prime correct divided by this is again f prime between the limit 0 and infinity so i can say f prime at infinity minus f prime at 0 so f prime at infinity what is the value 1 and this 0 so this is essentially f prime and now what is f prime okay so therefore for the particular case for prandtl number equal to 1 your theta 
is exactly equal to in fact if you go ahead and complete the solution for different values of Prandtl number you can do this uh, numerically as a nice exercise and plot 1 minus theta which is t minus t infinity by t wall minus t infinity as a function of eta okay you will find uh, curves like this so this is all for increasing values of Prandtl number say this could be Prandtl number 0.6 then this could be 1 3 something like 1000 and so on okay so it will start from so at eta going to 0 so I have, I have plotted 1 minus theta so t should be equal to t wall so therefore it goes to 1 and eta for large values of eta t should approach t infinity and 1 minus theta goes to 0 okay so this is how uh, qualitatively you can sketch the uh, similarity profiles for theta okay and you can find that for the exact uh, value of pr1 both the velocity profile and temperature profiles are identical all right so we will stop here today and uh, tomorrow we will continue on uh, calculating the heat transfer coefficient from the temperature profiles okay